tonight. <laughs> oh, no, we Get don't. out your Bibles. Get ready to rock and roll. Uh, no, seriously, we just, honestly, we just wanted to have some time together. Really? I mean, we miss everybody. Of course, we can't see you in person yet. Uh, but you've been in quarantine. I've, most likely, husbands and wives have been spending more time together than they normally do because uh, there's no whatever there's a lot of not a lot of stuff to do even if you are working and you come home and it's like what do you do uh we have some ideas on what you could do uh so, <laughs> oh my gosh so uh <clears throat> you, all are the, you are getting the real pj tonight That's right. like we're just the gonna real have some fun <laughs> uh and answer a couple and a couple questions did come in uh we do have a few things we actually do have seven Ackerman keys to a happy marriage but we're just gonna like focus on probably one maybe two yeah. tonight and just talk about those uh and then answer the couple questions that did come in uh we want to do that uh as well so okay shall we okay. shall we pray open in prayer okay. okay so i have my phone with me because we are not facebook live experts we are not technology experts but i have it here just in case someone has a question you can type it in and i might see it mm. and if i don't see it this time so far, we've had a lot of fun getting this thing set up. Yeah. Um, so it, when we do another one, um, we can answer que that question then. Right. Um, but we do have a couple questions that came in. And um, like he said, you know, we're not, this isn't like a verse by verse teaching. We just wanted to spend some time with you guys. We want to talk a little bit about marriage. Yeah. <clears throat> Invite you in a little bit into our marriage sure. just to hear some things that we've learned over the years. Uh, and go from there. But let me, let's open, open in prayer. prayer ahead, and then we'll, I'll give a kind of a foundational scripture um, that we just want to talk, talk about just for a second and then we'll get into some stuff. All right. Okay, <clears throat> let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this evening. Thank you, Father, that you uh, really have ordained relationships and marriages. Lord, we thank you, Father, that uh, we can invite you in uh, to our relationships and into our marriages. And Father, we just invite you here tonight to have your way in this place. And we just ask that you are with us, you lead us and guide us. And I just pray for every marriage watching live and even later on recording, Lord, that you will just bless them. Bless yeah. them, bless them, bless them indeed. Strengthen their relationships in this time of quarantine and of being uh, together more, Father. Help them to see and understand and remember the things which made them fall in love in the first place, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that you're restoring marriages, you're reconciling marriages, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Okay. Lead on. What do you have? What do I have? I submit to you. Oh my gosh. I thought you were <laughs> going to start talking. <clears throat> okay. I'm, I'm a submissive wife. And you're okay. Here. So, go. yeah. So, uh, the, well, I guess we'll start with the, one of the first things and then we'll answer a couple of the questions. No, you wanted to start with a question. No, did you not? Yeah, do that. Okay. So do we did get a question. Um, let's see. I'm going to go here. Okay. So we were going to start with a question and then just do some talking. We're going to close yeah. with a question. Let's do that. Um, so... The question was, Pastor Jason, I admire how closely knit you and Liz are. Mm. From what I've seen, you do almost all your activities and meetings together. Has it always been this way for you? If not, how did you get to that point? Mm. <clears throat> so that's a really good question. It is. Um, above the door of our office upstairs, we have a sign that says better together. Yeah. Um, when we came to the church and we stepped into this leadership role, um, the staff was awesome and welcoming us and they were just like, so Liz, where will your office be? And I was just kind of like, mm. um, our office. And so it was just like a whole new, right. it was a whole <clears throat> new right. way for the staff. And it was a whole new way kind of for us that, that this, this was really the beginning of us being together this much together physically this much. Yeah. But I think truly from the very beginning, We've had a commitment that we're going to do this thing together. Right. Yeah. So, but what I'm, what I, I was starting here and moving backwards. Yeah, go. That here, yeah. this one, we share one office at the mm. church. We have an inner office and an outer office. The conference room. Right? Well, it's right. a conference room. I call it inner office, outer office. Yeah. And that way we can have our separate spaces if we need them. Mm. And we're having meetings separately, which we rarely do. So we are together. And the Lord, we knew that that was a call for us personally, right. and we've known it for a long time, and it took a long time to get there. Yeah. And it was hard, mm. as it always is, to know that you have a calling to something and then wait for it to actually come to fruition. Yeah, so true. there were some times, I think, where we tried to make it happen, and it was like a disaster. <laughs> um, there, there have been times, so to, we are better together, um, 
But I'll tell you what, it, it's hard sure. to be together that much. And over this past year, there's been some times where it's just like, oh my gosh, will you not be my shadow? Like, yeah. go somewhere else. Right. Him to me, me to him. So um, um, it's not all it's not all rainbows and sunshine, working together, mm -hmm. being together. Um, we're learning and growing. We are Even learning in it. 20 years married. This is 20 we're years. We're still yeah. learning and growing well, yeah, and learning definitely. about each other, learning about ourselves. Truly. Maybe even more so than learning about each other, just learning about mm -hmm. who we are. The more time we spend yeah, together, right. um, <clears throat> the more we're learning really about ourselves as, as well. Yeah. yeah. So to answer that question, has it always been this way that we're together so much? No, it mm -hmm. hasn't been. Um, in spirit, of course. <clears throat> And that's what I mean, like in spirit yeah. always, but yeah. but not necessarily physically yeah. uh, together and everything. So I will say, if you're watching and you're not married, um, I remember we weren't even dating um, at the time. <clears throat> we were friends who wanted to be dating, but we couldn't be dating because <laughs> of crazy circumstances that I won't go into. But we had to wait to start officially dating. And um, so we took like a six hour walk around Tom's River, New Jersey. I don't even think we held hands, but we just walked and we talked. It was one of those, yeah. you know, one of just one of those talks where everything comes out. And um, I knew, I knew that day. I knew that after that talk, I mean, we talked about everything. I made my statements very boldly, as I do. Like I'm not working, you know. <laughs> when I get married, and I'm having right. kids. I'm staying home, you know. Guess what? I have lots of kids and I work. <laughs> so <laughs> things don't always turn out the way you think. But he was like, that's awesome, you know? And we just got to know each other. And we had a lot of unity right from the start. Truly. We had the same values. Mm -hmm. We had the same... We were just very open about what we wanted. Um, okay, this is really good. Mm -hmm. So this is good. If you are married, it doesn't even matter how many years if you're thinking about getting married. Um, one of the defining things of our marriage is that, um, well, was that first of all, Jesus is in the middle of it. Amen. And I can't say that he was yeah. totally in the middle of it during our dating, but our hearts were mm -hmm. there. You know, we were seeking to honor God. Um, and we were just coming into that, into yeah. that level of our Christian walk Truly. of wanting to honor God. Right. And inviting him in. Inviting even, what does it even mean? What did that even mean? And what that meant, right? But we had a conversation and one of the hallmarks of our marriage is that I speak my mind. I mean, I say it, if I, if I, if I perceive something, I'd rather yank it out into the open and have mm. a good old fight about it mm. than leave it fester or stay quiet about it and become resentful or secretly angry. I don't do secret. Like, mm. and I teach my kids that we don't do secret. Right, yeah. um, so, and there's some caveats to that as you mature and as you have to give people some space. space. You don't <laughs> right. have to rake them over the coals. Every, Why are you doing that? Right. <laughs> like right away. Right, right away. No, but we were dating and this guy was just high capacity, very driven, very ambitious, and very capable. So he was in his senior year at Penn State. And I mean... He's interviewing with some of the top companies in the country. He is going to, I mean, his aspiration was to be the CEO of all of GE, to live in New York City or Connecticut, to take a helicopter to work each day. <laughs> he... Sounds nice. But I mean, that's what his goal was. And here's the thing is I know him. I know his capability. I knew it then. And I, I remember hearing that part of his heart. We had been dating for a while. And it was just like a, ugh, settled on me. And I, at one point, I just looked at him and I said, I can't marry you. I cannot marry you if that's truly, truly mm. what you're called to do. Because I will not mm. have a husband and I will not have a paycheck and no husband. I will not live in a penthouse and not see the man that I'm married to. And I, I, I honestly remember saying, I would rather live in a cardboard box on welfare, having a family and a man that I love, then be wealthy in a penthouse and never ever see you and have some sham of a marriage or have not that people in penthouses don't have real marriages. So right. I'm not saying, I'm really right. not saying that, right. but I just knew, I knew how needy I was. <laughs> like I'm going to need some time and attention. <laughs> like, I knew that that life was just never going to make it with me. And that was a really difficult conversation mm. because I said, if you lay that down, I mean, you better pray on it. Because if you lay that down for me, you will never come back around and point your finger at me and say, 
I could have been great, except you, woman, told right. me I couldn't. Right. So it was never about me wanting to limit him. It was about me wanting to align right. our idea of what expectations, a fa- expectations up front, right? What a family Still, would look even, like, even yeah. years into the marriage. That money wasn't important to me at all. Like it was the lowest thing on my list. It's it's risen up a little bit. I tell eight has. kids later. You think I've told of, my girls. Sometimes you think about. I told money my girls, marry a marry a marry a <laughs> provider. I don't care what he does, but he's got to be hardworking <clears throat> and consistent. I mean, yeah. video games cannot be mm. his. You know his. Yeah. What he does all right. the time, he's got to be. Right. So I, 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 I'm not saying that I didn't. I wanted someone to sit at home with me all day, like he does now. This guy. Jeez. Uh, Lift the quarantine. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So our togetherness. So try to wrap this question up. Our togetherness began very early on in yeah. spirit. Yeah. Um, our openness and communication began very early on, and I, I will say that is largely one of my strengths sure you're a great communicator yeah but i am great at um he's a great communicator but doesn't love confrontation like he just doesn't based on the house that i grew up and, right. and you got to remember when two people are coming together you're bringing your entire life family your history. life experiences your family history mm-hmm. how how you saw people fight and argue and, and in my house it was you know the, the fight and the arguing i didn't even know what happened so my mom, go outside my mom and dad would go out in the car and fight if they fought at all, very rarely. And I didn't even know what was going on. So I was completely sheltered from it. And in your family was really quite the opposite. It was, it was quite the opposite. It was There's the Royal lot. Rumble right in front of everybody. I mean, yeah. right there. And it's and a loud Italian family, loud Italian family. And you learned early on mm-hmm. how to, how to argue and how to fight. And how to how to fight fair, and how to put your opinion too. out there, and, how to, yeah. and I didn't, and so there'd be points during our marriage where we would have to look at each other. And you, I think you said one time, I have to be careful because I know that I can win every fight. I did early and, on, and not that because you were right, but because I'm, on, I'm better at fighting. Because you're better at fighting, at arguing, at arguing, and, and winning, coming up with a argument. point, and and so you had to lay that down, knowing. I can, you know, I can win yeah. every argument and I need to be like, look, I can't avoid every confrontation. Right. I can't avoid every argument. I can't be like, well, you know, that's just, a, well, maybe that'll just resolve itself. You know, let me just start praying. Look, pray, 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 pray Dude. for your spouse, pray for your future spouse. If you're watching Not Married, if you're engaged, be praying together. Uh, and that's something we can we still pray, grow in. We, we prayed a pray lot together, together in the beginning of our marriage. Yeah. Then kids come. You have seasons where you do it more, seasons when you don't. Where it gets really right. a lot harder right. to do it. Um, but if we're going to just jump right into praying together, man, just like do it. If you're in a season where it's hard, like it's hard to set a time to yeah. sit down and make it official, make it unofficial. Like make it unofficial. Make yeah. it impromptu. Like... He's walking by and you're walking by and you're having a rough time. Right. I mean, I have done this so many times. I'll just grab him yeah. and be like, pray for me right now, please. Right. And he, if there's been times when he's offered up like a sweet, pretty general prayer. And I'm just like, okay, start again and make it specific and powerful and fight for me on this. Mm. He's like, oh, got it. You know what I mean? Like, right. because sometimes right. we need powerful prayer and sometimes... Right. But... We haven't always had like a devotional time together or prayer, like a set prayer time together because yeah. we have have a big family right. and all that goes with that. And it's all, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot of ships yeah. passing it literally in the night. Sure. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of you out there, maybe, of course, they always say opposites attract, right? Yeah. And so you are attracted to somebody who's very different than you. You are a night owl. I am. I'm a morning person, so you know there'll be some days where we maybe only spend, you know, several hours of the daylight, you know, and being awake at the same time. I mean, we're just you know have different uh, times where we sleep, but you have to be intentional then about those times where you are together as well to try not to be the ships passing, you know, ships passing constantly yeah. or all the time. <clears throat> and then just to wrap up that question too about always doing it together, uh, I had asked, I had asked the Lord. Yeah. You this, know, I'd ask the Lord, thing. when I stand before you, and that was actually, you heard that oh, from somewhere, you did huge. it. Yeah. When I, Jesus, when I am standing before you, what are you going to hold me accountable to? What is it? What, are we what talk is about? the thing that you're going to tell me, hey, Jason, my son, let's talk about this. 
and I asked them for an order. I said, put them in order for me. I'd like to know the order of importance. And uh, the very first one, he said, was doing it together. Did you do it together? Did you do it together was the question that he was going to ask me, that he will ask me. I believe he told me that. He will. uh, Did you do it together? And so the interpretation of that was in our was in your your heart yeah, and your hands, right? Because and I've submitted to him thoroughly. What is that? What does that mean? Because it doesn't just because he said that. What does it really mean? I went to the grocery store by myself today. You did. I did. And I don't think you were in disobedience to the Lord yeah, on that. See, um, so it doesn't mean everything together. <laughs> but um, when when the Lord gave Thank the goodness. word, I know you're being really goofy tonight. <laughs> Um, when the Lord gave that word, and there's been times throughout this year, because this year has been hard. There's, there's, it's just been a hard transition in some ways. There have been times where I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure he really meant like together, together, together doing together. this? Or maybe he just meant, and he always, you always stick yeah. to your guns. Because, yeah, you have to. You have to. When you hear yeah. from the Lord or something in the scripture, you got to stick to it. Because the wind and the waves will come. Challenges will come against the things that God has told you. Uh, and you gotta you gotta stick with it, and yeah, it was that's it. Yeah. We're doing this thing together, whatever that means. And and we had the sense that we knew that mm-hmm. when God spoke that years and years ago, mm-hmm. uh, that and the second one was to develop your kids in the Lord and, and in, in their talents and in their gifts and talents. De- did you develop your kids in the Lord and in their gifts and talents? So those are the first two things. So church, we love you. Right. Everyone on Facebook, we love you. But guess what? Numero uno. And num- number two, I just, you know, switch languages there, you know, uh, <laughs> they're not going to be anything about the church, right. nothing at all about the church. Right. Uh, and so we just need to. Because you really <clears throat> believe that you really will someday stand before the Lord and yeah. he really is going to ask you. Yeah, he's going to hold me accountable yeah. for those two things. Yeah. And then number three, actually, while we're talking about it, number three was <laughs> to teach people and talk to people about marriage, parenting and leadership. leadership. And so, hey, here we are, mm-hmm. years and years and years and years after that word that this is coming. Well, wasn't you know, that many years ago? To, to fruition. Two or three. Yeah, two or three. Two well, or it three. feels like. <laughs> feels like it too. Feels many. like a long time ago. So the scripture we were joking about using <laughs> is in uh, Psalm 23. So the scripture verse for tonight. <laughs> Yay, even, though I walk, walk through, through the, the valley sh- of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You were being so goofy yeah, tonight. Being, <clears throat> okay. okay, disregard that. He's Sorry. being so it's not silly the key tonight. scripture. No, the key scripture we did talk about though was Ephesians six. For I do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. You know, the enemy is going to come against <clears throat> relationships really? and marriages. It is the number one thing in our lives is what we're going to hold accountable for after our relationship with him. It is. And, um, and he's going to come after it. And we have to realize that this is not the enemy. Mm-hmm. We are not the enemies, but we do have an enemy. And this is why prayer is so important right. about living a life of prayer for your spouse. I remember those books. Remember those books? Just thinking that. The Power, power of a Praying of a Husband. Power of a Praying Power Husband. Power of Stormy O. Martin, I think her wow. name is. Good for you. <clears throat> I don't even know if those books exist. I spent sure a lot of time. I spent a lot of time praying for you. Oh, you're so <laughs> sweet to me. <laughs> uh, okay. No, seriously. But, but those are, I mean, that, but that walks you through prayers. Yeah. And we're not like I'm recommending the book. Well, maybe I kind of am. Yeah. Uh, but it's good. If you don't know what to do or what to pray for, how do I pray for my spouse? Okay, I can do, we could do a whole, and I'd like to do a whole half hour session at some point on praying for your spouse. Because okay. this is something, yeah. it's just something I could talk at length about. Um, and especially as a, as a woman and as a wife, hmm. there's so many things, ladies. So many things they need to change. There's so many ways that they need to grow. Tell me what they are, please. <laughs> I have a list. Show them all. Um, there's, there's, there's so many things that we see that we want to help them with, to be honest. Um, mm. And Because you see potential. <clears throat> Just like we see potential oh, in you guys. Well, no, like, absolutely. Like, yeah, 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 no. That's what I mean. I was joking. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I've had, I was. Um, I've had young, young married women ask me questions about their marriages and you know across the board everyone has different struggles in their marriages there's this like this whole spectrum um and there's seasons in marriage that are tougher than others and then i never learned more than i did in the the, in the tough seasons i always learned the most and what i learned the most about was Mm. me and my walk with the lord Mm. um and how my prayers were effective 
and mostly, I mean, I, I want, I'd like to do a whole session on it, yeah. but the thing I learned most is that only God, only the Lord can change his heart. Mm. That's it. Amen. If me telling him something 350 oh. <clears throat> times didn't work, then going for 351 is probably not like magically going to work. going to tip the scales. To make him put his phone down and or to stop being distracted during family yeah. time or whatever it is that's bugging me or that I see hurting me or hurting the kids. I can, I can address it because I'm a communicator. We're both communicators. And ideally, communication will work. Ideally. Yeah. Ideally, communication will result in some change of behavior because of love and sure. care, and we're both on the same team. That's in the ideal situation. And there are seasons when that works. We've spent time in those seasons ideal seasons, like, wow, which hey, is lovely. This, this right. or whatever it might be, right? But I've spent, <clears throat> we've spent time in seasons where it's just like communication isn't working. Yeah. You know, message not received, and it took even, me even more than not received. You know, yeah, not message not received in the wrong way or in the wrong light, and you just, know, yeah. offense coming and whatnot, sure. right? Um, and so, in those times, it's like it took me a while to learn. <coughs> I mean, I'm I'm I, I'm not stubborn and I'm not slow to learn, but sometimes a little slow to learn. It took me a while, yeah. and the Lord really, the Lord taught me. I was taught of the Lord how how and when to be quiet mm. and pray. And how to not be angry, but how there was natural consequences sometimes, yeah. you know, how to allow there to be natural consequences, you know, like I'm not particularly joyful or happy. I'm not. And he'd be like, are you mad? I'm like, well, I'm not happy because mm. you just did this for the 1800th time. Right. But whatever. Right. It's okay. I'm not mad. So it's like this fine line of, well, no, I'm not super thrilled, but I'm not going to punish you. I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to try to control your behavior through my anger. Right. That was, or, right. you know, try to get the result that, you know, is, is ideal, you know, right. by trying to manipulate right. you or using right. my emotions. It was a journey. My goodness, we could do a whole hour we on could. it. Well, the one but, thing we were going to talk about tonight. I'm not done talking about unity. Oh, we're not going to get to that big one. That's okay. Maybe not. Next time. Join us back again. Well, we are on Whenever a good... We no, this. we were on... <laughs> I just... I want... I like staying on one subject. Yeah. Um, if we can. And the question, again, was... Have we always been doing this together? Mm. So, we talked about... How we do do this together. If you didn't know that... I mean, we do mm. meetings together. We do kids together. Yeah. Um, I mean, he plays with Maggie Mae in the morning while I homeschool a couple kids. And then we come in the office in the afternoons... So, I mean, like, we do everything yeah. together, um, everything together. And so we got, we started there. We talked about how we started with really good communication even before we were married. Yeah. Um, but another thing is raising our kids. Mm. So in the beginning of our marriage, we had the real standard, you know, I will stay home and I very much wanted to do that and have the kids and you will go to work and he would work like a lot of hours a week a lot, a lot. Yeah. i don't know give me an estimate of what it was 50 60, 60 maybe maybe yeah. 60 <clears throat> hours a week at yeah. ge and i was okay with that um because i was okay with it um i i remember having the conversation with him listen from 5 to 8 p.m that is three hours a day that is all right. that all, i all we're asking for that's all right. i ask that right. you give to the kids to control. me and the kids uninterrupted that's three hours out of 24. Mm -hmm. You stay up half the night, get up, you know, three in the morning, do whatever you want with the rest of them. But I want from 5 to 8 p.m. Yeah. And that is a, it's a really good way to phrase it because it's very reasonable. It's three hours out of the day. These were when the girls were babies. The first couple girls were babies. Yeah. They were little. And so that's the way it was. And um, we'd have a date every once in a while. And weekends we were together. So that's how it was. And we had three kids. Um and when we had we had three kids, and I was homeschooling, and keeping the house, and I did all the house stuff, and he did all. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Why are you laughing? I'm with the discussion. For the conversation. Yeah, the discussion. We had the, we had the conversation. Yeah. I, I reference it often. The commitment. We had the conversation <laughs> about the commitment. Right. Yeah. Um, and again, mm. being together, being closely knit, it's communication. Mm. It's communication. Right. That's what it is, and. It's about being honest with yourself. Not, sh I don't, you know, not, don't give me the answer you think I want to hear. That's no. bad communication. Yeah, man, yeah. That will cause That's right. deep problems. That's not being honest. It's not honest communication. So um, we had three kids and 
our marriage was great. Honestly, this is probably one of the happiest times. Sweet spot. You probably, have, if everybody's been married for more than, I don't know, a couple of years, you know there's sweet spots in your marriage. It was definitely, that was a we sweet were in spot. a sweet spot. We're in a sweet spot now, baby. <laughs> you really, really make it difficult Sorry. for me to keep my train of Stay thought. Stay focused on unity. You're doing great. You were leading up to we that conversation. We have 27 people plugged in with Come us on. here. I love it. You are goofing off. I love it. Come on. Focus yourself. Um, the conversation you're getting back to. Oh. Um, Brandy, you're so sweet. Look at that, you guys. Hey. <laughs> okay, now I'm distracted. Sorry. I totally distracted um, you. With the we phone sat back. down and had a conversation. And I said to him, okay, listen. I said, we have these three beautiful girls. And I'm happy. Um, but I'm full. Like, I'm full up. I, I know my capacity. Like, I know my limits. I know what I can handle at this point in my life. I had grown so much in the Lord. Yeah. I'd gotten free from a lot of things. Um, and I had done a lot of growing in the Lord. This guy came to the marriage very mm. emotionally whole. Yeah. From my upbringing. Very stable. Parents, very Christian emotionally home, whole. Yeah. Very. My parents fought the car. We said that earlier. Right. right? It's just, even, just very. Does uh, conflict but, exist in the world? For right? all of the, for all of the, um, for all of your drive, like all of mm. his drive and all right. of his ambition and all of everything, it was all being spent at GE. I mean, I didn't even realize what kind of husband I had. I got this really sweet and nice and kind of vanilla guy mm. at home. He was so easy to be married yeah. to. Um, it was perfect. Um, I didn't know that he was like at work. I mean, he was godly. He was never not godly, but all of that drive went to work and not so much in spiritual growth. Because I remember yeah. us having conversations. He was, mm. he seriously, he, was, he wasn't he was the spiritual leader of our home. Yeah. He didn't hear from God yeah. so much that changed in the beginning. The very, yeah, it's a very significant time that changed. We can talk about that. We can talk, I, I mean, we can talk about when wow. it changed. Yeah. And God changed it. He did. I didn't change it. The Lord changed he it. Did. And actually you and the Lord changed it. You That's made a right. decision and we could talk about that. That was yeah. really good. It was good. Um, and we were... The starting point of that, Grace was about two years old. Yeah. So that was 14 years ago. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it's a pinpoint. It's a turning point. Yeah. Now, prior to that turning point, he was a godly man. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we went to church. We prayed together. We read the Bible together. I mean, right. we were godly men. But he wasn't hungry after the things of God. Mm -hmm. He, We didn't have deep conversations about right. God's will and, you know, anything. Right. Really. Right. And we do now. Right. But anyway, where was it going with this? You're you got to get back to that conversation. I'm getting back to the conversation. Yeah. We had this conversation, um, and I said, if if this is how we're going to continue on at GE, and you're going to continue to go up that ladder, and this is the life we want to live. Then... Which is back to the original conversation, which we started with before we even got married, right? I, yeah, I kind well, of returned you know, to that same theme. Right. There was, there was just this I said, you have life. to, something has to change, or we can't have any more kids. Hmm. I always wanted a lot of kids. And then we got to three, and they were so good. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I just thought, oof, this is easy. They mm. were good kids. Um, but I just knew I needed more help. I needed more support. Yeah. Um, and I needed more of him emotionally and just every which way. It, it, it was a tipping point. It was a growth point. So we had that conversation. I said, what do you want to do? And um, I don't know if you prayed about it. I don't remember mm. it taking much time. Yeah. But he was like, no, I want more. I want more kids. I want to go big, right? That right. was the thing. We can go big. We can have four or five or six kids, which is right. what we were thinking that time. But you need to be more involved. You need to be more engaged. And what I really said was that the dividing line has to go away. Mm -hmm. I need to sleep more at night, which means you get up with them at night. Right. Um, even if there's, you know, body fluids are now open. They're <laughs> fair game. Like, because before he'd do the pee Blood, diapers, the pee. I would do most everything else, yeah. right? I said that that has to change. Like all the dividing lines have to go. Yeah. And um, I used to let him sleep because he had to get up for work the next day. Like I didn't have to get up for work the next day. Right. 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 And when you have one or two kids, it's less. But I could see more children. It actually, it's just work. Mm. You do. You have to be awake and alert and leading people all day long. Little right. people. Right. And I remember saying that to you, is the little people, I'm writing on the book of their life in permanent marker. Mm. It's what I'm, I said, if you go to work and lose your temper, you've lost your temper on grown men acting like children. They're not going to be emotionally torn because Jason was mean to them today. Whereas if I wake up and I right. struggle with my temper, it's with our right. most precious right. little ones 
and I'm writing on the pages of the mm. book of their life. So that was a commitment that I had to make, right, a commitment that I had to make yeah. a decision, and then I had to stick with it. Yeah. And like this is a this is a, almost a line in the sand. Like this is what we're gonna do. This is the life we're gonna live. We're gonna do this together. We're gonna do it in unity. Right. Whatever it takes. If I gotta get up in yeah. the middle of the night, if I have to, you know, change all those diapers. Right. Whatever it means. But this is the that most was a turn. That was thing, one yeah. of those. So there's like when you ask the question about have we always been like this? Have we always been knit together? Honestly, here's the thing, guys, whether it's your own personal Christian walk, your calling in life, like where you, what you want to do for the Lord, where you see your ministry going, your personal ministry for the Lord, um, your marriage, there are these moments in time and they're decision points that I see. Mm. So the decision points, we talked about the early on conversation where he wanted to be king of the world and mm. I was like, mm, that's not going to work for me. That was a decision point where fear spoke and said, if you speak up, you could lose him. And he's like the best thing that you've ever had. Um, and I said, yeah, well, what's the point of having the best thing you ever yeah, had if we're just going to go away <clears throat> again? Right. Right. So there was, there was the, but there was the fear and the temptation mm. to don't say anything. You don't want to lose him. Right. So that was a, it was a test. It was a testing point. Right. And I, you know, I obviously decided to speak up. There's a theme here. I speak up. <laughs> um, and I do believe that on being honest with how you feel, even if it's not yeah. awesome or whatever, in the face of fear is always a good thing. Right, yeah, yeah. So there's these points um, of, of decision that led us to this place of together. Right. It was um, my commitment to be honest about what I needed. I knew what I needed. Yeah. Um, I knew what I needed at each point. And you would make a commitment, and then there was never, ever, there's never been a time that he has looked at me and said, you know, anything. Like, I could have been, it could have been more if only you would have not gotten my way, or if we would have had fewer kids, or right. because we made those decisions together, together to be together. together. Right. So at that point, he, we had that conversation, and I got pregnant with Eva, and him Miss and Eva, Eva. Oh, that yeah. was the turning point. I had her. And that baby was number four. baby number four. And she would cry in the middle of the night and he would get up and get her, bring her to the bed where she would nurse. And as soon as she was done nursing, I'd give him this mm. and he'd get up and take her away. He'd change her diaper. I wish they had at that time. I wish they had those pedometers or whatever. He like, would walk. Man, I would have probably put on so many miles in the middle yep, of the she night. She was a walking you baby. She it. just wanted to walk all the Sports time. Sports center in the middle of the night and lots of miles around the... Sports center in the, the middle of the, the night. The living room, dining room. Mm -hmm. Remember the family room, living I do. room, dining room? Just yes, walking in circles. So, I mean, I know many of you... Moms and dads have done that in the middle of the night, yeah. but man, have I put some miles on. And so, and, <laughs> and that was awesome. So you're thinking like, wow, she's so lucky. I was, I would be in bed and you know what I was fighting? I was fighting to let him do that. Mm. I was fighting Not feel bad about feelings it, of yeah. guilt. Like, you know, you're not being just, they were just lies, lies right. about I'm not being like the all, the all serving wife right. and you know, just trying to push me into exhausting myself in mm. order to try to what? Get some right. badge that doesn't exist, right. you know. Um, and you have to know each other, even biologically. Right. Like, I literally need less sleep than you. You do. It's just a By biological like fact that I can, <laughs> I can operate and work on six to six and a half hours a night. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it for decades. I don't know how my eyes look. I can't tell. You look good. <laughs> no, but seriously, you know, yeah. and you need more than that. Yeah. No, maybe not twice as much as that, but you need <clears throat> you need more than that, and that you have to recognize that, and maybe that's just one example. Vice and be versa. honest about and then be, and it, because we're not vice, it's not right. competition. It's right. not. Although I mean, we've gone through we've gone through times where it's just like, oh mm. my goodness, you know, he's do I'm doing more than him, or he's doing more than me. Yeah. But that's just a temptation right. to get you into strife. Right. Um. So anyway, we had that conversation. And that united us even more on this large family. Yeah. I had someone ask me once, how many kids do you think um, a couple should have? It's a really weird question because right. who am I to say how many kids? How many kids does God tell you to have? That's not what I said. <laughs> because that's not what I said. Um, because people aren't always reliable to hear yeah. to hear clearly <clears throat> from the Lord. Oh, marriage key that we should add at some point in time. Hearing from God yeah. and doing what he says. With confirmation. 
yeah. being submitted to confirmation. Man. So you don't get off doing crazy stuff no, no. or believe in crazy things that aren't no, no. aren't from God. Good. How and did you answer that God. question? How did I, I answer that question? I said to that person, I said, you should have as many children as your marriage can support. Ooh. And I felt like that was like a Holy mm. Spirit answer. Mm. Because if you, if you're trying to hold together a marriage, but you have a dream of having a house full of kids, you're it's gonna, not going to make the marriage easier. <clears throat> yeah, right. either you made either right. you made your decision already. You're already married. You have to live in that reality. Mm. So um, that was my answer, for better or worse. Yeah, um, it was in the grocery store. I don't know why this it's person. A random person. I think it was the checkout lady. How many kids do you think couples should have? Do you we think, do get a lot of questions when we. Do you think couples should ha should all? Do you think people should have big families? Do you think everyone should homeschool? I actually believe that home? people should not. Right. There are some people who I believe should not have children right. until they get counseling. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, that's I, one of the things. Like, if you need help, get help. Please. Do not be afraid to get right. help. Do not be afraid to raise your hand. Call the church. Or call a counselor. I mean, we've we've seen counselors. Yay! Yay! Marriage counseling. I think counselors we've are done phenomenal. It. Yeah, we've done it. Where we you grew can say from things it. out loud. I cried. I mean, I cried like a baby during that. Was it afterwards or during it? It was during. I don't remember. That was <clears> the but... first time you'd ever been to counseling. And we walked out oh and he was just gosh. like, is that what counseling is? Because oh, it felt great. I was like. Just bawling my eyes out. Oh, my goodness. Because it feels good to say yeah. out loud right. what you're, you're always trying to keep it together. Right. But in, a, in, a, in counseling, and let me just use this moment to say we are not professional counselors. Yeah. Yeah. But we oh, know man. professional counselors um, who are good and gifted and, and kind of anointed to do that. Amen. Um, but it feels good to sit there and say out loud what you're struggling mm. with. Right. And have someone affirm that. Yeah, that's a struggle. Yeah. You know, and, and to help kind of right. pull out all the details and arrange it and help you see yeah, for kind what of worth clearly. Yeah, for what it really is, right. So, right. yeah. Well, based on our time, yeah. I'd this like is, to answer that other question. We're already 10 minutes past I want to answer the other question. We wanted to go short. Sex. We don't. <laughs> we don't. Well, we don't ever go question. short. Okay. The second Read the question, other question. He's excited about the other question. Because I want to hear your answer to it. <clears throat> <laughs> he is in a mood tonight. Okay. Um, all right. So we just wrapped up from the first question about being knit together. Unity. Unity. Yeah. We, you know, we incorporated in that some stuff about communication, about prayer. prayer. Yeah. We could go on for hours about any one of those topics, but he is excited about the next question. We got this question. We got to, we got to answer Let it. Let me find the question. Um, all right. So he's excited about the question. The question is, how do you give proper attention to sex when you are tired and getting up several times a night and mm. with a house full of kids mm. is essentially the question. Answer that for us. It, the short answer is you prioritize it. Amen. Amen. The short answer is you prioritize it. Mm. Um, there are ways. There are ways to find time. You there put on a movie. To, you put on a movie for the kids. You I'm put the you, baby in the high chair. You strap the baby in the high chair <laughs> with no food. And you put on little baby so bum. So safe, right? You put on little baby bum. Yeah. And if you only have one kid, you just leave the door open. Right. Right? They're safe. You can hear them. <laughs> Hopefully they can't hear you. Yeah. Um, and if they can, they can't remember. Um, if you have multiple kids, yeah. you just say, honey, um, you know, you wait until they go to bed. Yeah. And then you, we got kids all over the house all the time. All the time. And, yeah. And we have to make it a priority. Even well, and, now. And we've got like we've got eight kids. Closets that people share. I mean, there's kids running. We have eight kids from time. 17 down to age two. Right. Okay. And our house is almost 100 years old in the main part. Yeah. And there are bathrooms like, where the doors don't lock. Geez. There's a curtain to the... I mean, it's it's a lovely home. Don't get yeah. me wrong. It's really lovely. Yeah. But privacy, privacy is hard to come low, by in the low, upstairs. Low, low, low. Yeah. So um, we, we tell all the kids, mm. you know, the house is closed down tonight at 8 p.m. Everyone come for prayer at 7.55. I pray for them all. No kitchen. Brush your teeth. Mom and dad have a meeting at yeah, eight. Yeah. All they know is we have a meeting. They yeah. probably think we're on Zoom. Who knows? Or something. The older kids probably know what's going on. Whatever. That's, that's why we position the youngest child's bedroom closest to, closest our, to our bedroom. Always. I mean, it's just, if you have the option to do that, the ability mm -hmm. to do that, 
Obviously, I would recommend oh, that. Oh, okay, and I already know there's going to be like a question subset to this question. What if your child is sleeping in your room? Ooh. Because if you have young children, that is a reality. We had seven yeah. kids in a mobile home. Yeah. You can bet. We had multiple kids sometimes, like cribs in the room because yeah. there's nowhere else for them to go. Yeah. And what I say to that is living whatever. Room. Living room. No. <laughs> what in the living room? Put the kid in the living room? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Because then other kids can come out. Oh, that's true. I thought you were thinking. talking back with one kid. My mind is somewhere totally out, somewhere else now. I don't <laughs> this know. is what happens when you I don't talk know about what's sex. Going on. This is why we don't talk about it on Sunday morning very much because now because I'm just he's all like, flustered. Ooh. Okay, <clears throat> you need to get yourself together. Come on. Okay, if your child is sleeping in your room, here's what I have to say: They're a baby. They're not listening. So as soon as they fall asleep, have the meeting. Don't delay. Don't put it off. Mm. Um, something else I wanted to talk to is if you're a nursing mom or if you're in that season of life where you're having kids, nursing your babies is so important and it's it's a good thing to do. Your body produces a hormone called prolactin mm. and that's the milk making hormone. Something else that hormone does is it decreases your hormone, like your, your desire for sex. The libido. It does. It decreases <clears throat> that and that's a protective function so that you are like the resources are... Yeah being you know all of your hormonal resources are toward your baby's survival right your baby's food and also to keep you from getting pregnant again yeah. really quickly i believe it's a kind of a god ordained protective rest <laughs> right. function for women yeah. um so that we don't get pregnant right away again um but we've obviously up with eight kids they came one at a time um if that's not something that's high on your list of priorities, you have to understand that it's important. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> to the men, I would say, listen, but you, you guys are going to make it. You're going to survive. You right. know, you're going right. to you're going to survive, and right. it might not be as frequent as you want it. And women, it might be more frequent than you want it if you're post baby or you have little ones. Right. But you all you have to meet in the middle. Yeah, you have to meet. You gotta in talk the about it, and you have to talk. And you gotta about talk, it. man. We got a whole session on sex and talking about we it. We really could. We could Title it, Let's Talk About Sex. You want to play the song? Salt and Pepper, baby. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Was it Salt and Pepper? I don't know, maybe. Okay, sorry. Let's talk about sex, baby. baby. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. No, but it has to be prioritized. It has to be, okay. have to be communicated. It, um, you know, intentions made clear. Not super subtle, too. I mean, there's times with emotional and hormones, and there's things yeah. going on. And there has to be a lot of so grace much. and yeah, communication. Grace, yeah. Grace and communication has yeah. to be all in it. One, Jesus just has to be in the center of it. There has mm -hmm. to be. That is that is one area of our life that was committed, submitted, yeah. prayed about from day yeah. one. Yeah. We Communion got, before. We got some I mean, really yeah. good <clears throat> leading from mm -hmm. our pastor who married us and who we grew up in the church. And he told us on our wedding night, um, when we, after the wedding, he said, you know, after everyone leaves and you're in your hotel or wherever you're going, he said, just take communion together. Just get down on your knees and just take communion together and just commit that area of your life to the Lord. Yeah. <clears throat> and right. we were on our way from the, from the dance place, the dance hall, like where the reception was to the hotel. And I think we had to stop yeah, maybe at a gas it, station. Yeah. And I don't know if you got iced tea and a package of peanut butter crackers. I don't know. I don't remember what we took communion with. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, it was a little awkward. It was a little, it yeah. was awkward because it was vulnerable. It was just like, yeah. I mean, I had never privately taken communion with anybody, you know, but it, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't park there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't let that stop me from doing it. And I didn't right. focus on the awkwardness of it. Um, because if, if that had anything to do with, how healthy and how well that part of our life has gone since. Boy, right. I would tell everyone, if you didn't do that, do it now. Yeah. If you're not married yet, highly suggest doing it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> on the wedding night or whatever. And then... But if you... If you haven't and you guys are down the road and you're... Yeah. But it's, it's never too late. It's not. Never if too you late. Need, if you need healing in that area of your life and that in, in sex and the physical connection part of your life... If you need healing in that part of your life and you're both there, like you both want to participate in that, then I would highly suggest just um, inviting Jesus in, yeah. you know, and asking him to renew mm. and to restore and to, um, and to just lead you in that area. Yeah. And what's going to happen? Because this, gosh, we've got stories. We've mm. got good stories 
I mean, we have to do more sessions. We've got some good stories, but I mean, they're kind of highly personal, so it's a little weird to do them. Yeah. Maybe I have to do some of them in person. I'd you like change to... the names. Protect the innocent. Um, <clears throat> when you pray, and if you do that, what's going to happen is he is going to lead you. Mm. He's going to lead you to lay some things down yeah. that you don't realize are stealing from you in that area. Yeah. He's going to lead you in ways of purifying your thoughts, not just men, but women too, yeah. in ways that you didn't realize were a problem. Mm. And if you really want his help and you have the goal in mind, like, um, you you know what you want, which is a really healthy, wonderful sex life, then it will be worth it, and you'll begin to lay things down. That's especially for men. Yeah. I mean, especially for, sure. for men. <clears throat> for I sure. think they're, the things that, you know, I, I think some things are harder for men to lay down, but, and we can, again, we can have a yeah, second we should session. Wrap up. We, should wrap this one up. we can have a second session really go into, some things are really hard to lay down, but um, I can, we could go into some stories and to some yeah. things that you have laid down entirely yeah. lot of, not just the not just the obvious things but some not so obvious things yeah. and you've never regretted it a, a minute in your life right. so right. Um, to bring it back around to the question yeah. um, if if you are in the season of life where you're really busy mm. um, and you have a lot of kids or whatever season of life you're in and you're just having trouble prioritizing your physical relationship um, in this session, at this moment, I mean, I don't have any great advice except for you have to prioritize it. Yeah. I mean, my advice in any, any question you ever ask ever about any topic is pray about it. Yeah. Take it to the Lord <clears> and right. earnestly talk to him about it um, and say, you know, lead me and teach me in this because he led us and he taught us. So we can tell you our stories about how we're knit together. We can yeah. tell you our stories about you know how god has blessed our, our physical relationship we can tell you all of our stories um but they are they pale in comparison to the wisdom mm. and of w one word from god yeah, one insight from the lord yeah. can change everything in your That's marriage right. Right. so the fact that we started with like 28 and yeah. now we just dropped down to 24. That's not bad because we are going longer than what yeah. we thought by yeah. 20 minutes. We're we wanted like, oh, to keep it to a half hour. Minutes, no problem. Yeah. Our kids know us. They knew we were never going right. to keep it to a half hour. I think Anna laughed at us. She's like, yeah, okay. I know. Um, we never go short. We just don't. Um, so the most important thing I can tell you is if you're watching and if you've stuck with us this long, your mm. marriage is a priority to you That's or right. you just – like watching him be a goofball yeah. um, and get all flustered about something new. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your marriage is a priority to you. And if you take it before the Lord, he is faithful. Mm. Um, marriage is his idea. Mm. Um, I love that when a man and a woman come together, we are just most in the image of God. I yeah. truly believe that. Right. Um, the I just, ability to create and yeah, it's really the cool. ability to <clears throat> create an eternal, a little eternal being, right? Yeah. With a, yeah. the, an eternal soul. Um, and spirit. I just think it's amazing. So prioritize your marriage, prioritize mm. your sex life. Mm. Um, if your child is in your bedroom, no problem. It's not a problem if they're little. Goodness, if they're yeah. in your bedroom and they're, you know, 16, low, yeah. that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's a problem. That's a whole other session. That's a whole other session we're, or we're a whole other conversation. To, uh, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, okay. that's what we have. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate the questions. Uh, thank you guys for uh, hanging in there with hanging us. Hanging in and uh, giving us some comments, stuff like that. Uh, we'll probably do another session. I don't know when, but we'll make sure it gets announced.